Good morning, everyone. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to share a, a recent case of a uh, complex mycotic uh, extent 5 thoracoabdominal aortic aneurysm. My disclosures. Um, so this is a 74-year-old uh, patient who was transferred from an outside hospital uh, after he presented with lower extremity edema, fever, and general malaise. Uh, the patient was known to the outside hospital for uh, his history of CHF with an EF of 27%. Um, during his admission, uh, blood cultures were obtained and he was found to have uh, E. coli and coag negative staph bacteremia. Uh, due to that, a CT of the abdomen and pelvis was obtained to take a look and try to find a source. Um, I was sent this uh, picture uh, Saturday morning uh, from the surgeon at the outside institution uh, on my phone and said, hey, can you take this patient and transfer? I think he's got a mycotic aneurysm and gave me a little bit of the history. Uh, on the CT scan, and I don't have all the images of the outside CT, uh, you can see a, a number of findings, and I'll just describe some of those. He's got this uh, Extent 5 TAA with some wall enhancement on the scan, uh, a chronically occluded right renal artery with atrophy of the right kidney, uh, some left atrial appendage thrombus, bilateral PE, and, and large bilateral pleural effusions right greater than left. So um, upon receiving this patient and evaluating them, we, we kind of had a couple different choices. We could either manage them with antibiotics alone uh, or uh, entertain the idea of, of going in and doing an open surgical repair uh, or doing some kind of endovascular repair. Given his uh, CHF with his EF of 27%, we decided to head down the endovascular route. Uh, fortuitously, at VEATH this past year, I had the opportunity to spend some time with Pat Kelly, uh, who's a vascular surgeon in South Dakota, and has recently published his experience with um, the debranching technique with uh, modified endografts using the uh, Medtronic system. And so in the back of my mind, I had some of these pictures that he had shared with me uh, prior to the publication. And uh, I think based on the patient's anatomy and, and the conversations that I had had um, with Pat, I decided to uh, head down the road of, of creating my own uh, three-branched endograft. And so what we did was we took a, uh, a 36 Endurant, which has a 14-millimeter contragate, which is the largest contragate of the commercially available um, endografts, and sewed three Viabonds to it. Kind of planned this out from the standpoint of, of uh, making them staggered in length so that they would be easy to identify and oriented them, uh, planning on putting the contra gate with a, a little bit of anterior uh, orientation and uh, using let's see if the lasers using our long branch to go to the left renal, the middle branch to go to the SMA, and the short branch to go to the celiac. Um, the f the first and hardest step was after modifying the uh, endograft was to get it back into the delivery catheter. And, and that's really proven to be the most challenging part of uh, modifying grafts with, uh, with the endurant uh, system. You can see the first step that we did is resheath it within a, a larger uh, caliber peel away and then spend a great deal of time reconstraining it with heavy silks and uh, rundowns uh, and then uh, remove them uh, individually as we brought the sheath back up. We were able to get it re, uh, resheathed uh, and, and ready to deliver. In, in the setting of uh, bacteremia and a presumed mycotic aneurysm, uh, I didn't think it was really a, a downside of trying to um, infuse or soak the graft a little bit with some rifampin based on our open surgical experience with infected grafts. And so we flushed the, uh, the graft and, uh, with rifampin, both this graft and the, uh, the valiant graft that we had uh, that we placed first. Uh, once we obtained access, this is the uh, first aortogram, uh, and this shows the Valiant device, which I planned on putting uh, in first so that the endurant branch graft would land inside of this to give it a little bit of extra support, uh, and uh, so this was the first run. Here you can see our uh, graft is deployed, and now we're coming from the arm, uh, going through the, that long Viabon branch going to the left renal, connecting the dot with the atrium ICAST stent and then a final run, and then we selected the SMA, another atrium cast, final run, and then the celiac atrium, 
and the final run there. Then we extended, uh, I wanted to try, uh, with, based on his anatomy, we were able to preserve the IMA as well. So I, we extended with the ipsilateral limb from the endurant and then extended with a 20 millimeter uh, uh, ipsilateral uh, limb extension and landed just above the uh, IMA in the inferenal aorta and then ballooned approximately and distally and then this is our final run preserving all three vessels. There's another orientation just to see the branches a little bit better. This is a, a post-op CT scan. It's you can see that all three branches are wide open. There's good wall opposition of the graft. IMA is still patent on that last cut. Here's a 3D rendering of, of the graft and kind of a magged up view of the, the three branches as they exit the uh, contralateral gate. And the delayed images, which you can still see this area of rim enhancement around here. So far, he's done well clinically, and we, we're still following him very closely. Uh, I'm hoping that we're not going to have to go in and do any, any kind of debridement of the uh, aortic and periaortic tissue. Uh, so currently, he's being treated with IV vancomycin and Zosin. Uh, I think our plan is to discharge him home on uh, PO, Cipro, and Zyvox for 12 weeks, and then probably some form of lifelong antibiotic suppression. Uh, we're going to obtain some repeat, repeat blood cultures in two weeks and then scan them again here probably in about four weeks. Uh, just a quick brief review. There's been a recent publication uh, in, the, uh, in circulation on a, the largest review of endovascular treatment of mycotic aortic aneurysms. There's been a lot more uh, data being uh, published about the use of uh, endovascular repair in the setting of mycotic aneurysms. Uh, the goal of the study was to evaluate the durability and uh, assess late infection complications and long-term survival. Uh, they had 123 patients, uh, all kinds of anatomic locations that are kind of the usual known distribution of mycotic aneurysms. The endovascular treatment uh, included TVAR, uh, nine fenestrated branch TVAR, similar to what we have, uh, and uh, inferenal EVAR in 71 patients. Uh, they administered antibiotics for a mean of 30 weeks. Mean follow-up, as you can see, was, was 35 months, and six patients were converted to open repair for uh, late infection complications or rupture. The overall survival um, is, is not that bad given the, um, the mortality of this type of problem. At one month, 91%, and as you can see, all the way to 120 months, uh, almost 50%. They did have nine uh, uh, infection-related uh, death in 23 patients, nine after the discontinuation of antibiotics, and so that kind of rings a little bit as far as keeping these patients on some form of lifelong antibiotic suppression. Uh, and uh, non-salmonella positive cultures uh, were a predictor for late infection-related death. So in summary, endovascular treatment for mycotic aneurysm is, is feasible and it is a, a durable treatment option. Uh, late infections do occur and they warrant long-term antibiotic treatment and follow-up. And non-salmonella positive blood cultures, I think, are uh, something that you need to keep a closer eye on those patients. Thank you, Josh. We're going to go to the uh, last case presentation by...